Hi guys, uh, this is Nick from NVIDIA. Thanks for coming to this AMP and uh, distributed data parallel session. Uh, actually, today is a Chinese traditional festival. All families get together to celebrate it. I'm very excited to get together with all you guys here to discuss the uh, latest uh, medical deep learning topics. Okay. Uh, as NVIDIA engineer, I'm proud to see that NVIDIA GPUs have been widely applied in many areas of deep learning. And uh, the CUDA library shows obvious acceleration in parallel computation when comparing to other traditional methods. Uh, furthermore, to fully leverage GPU performance, uh, let's uh, talk about the automatic mixed precision and uh, distributed data parallel here. Uh, there are many benefits to use uh, FP16 number with lower precision than the 32 floating number. Uh, I think uh, uh, first, it requires uh, less memory. So we can use bigger network structure or bigger batch size for training. Uh, second, the mass operations can run much faster with the lower precision, uh, especially on NVIDIA GPUs with the tensor core. Uh, you can take a look at the chart here. It's the speed up of uh, FP16 on popular networks when comparing to FP32, uh, like uh, BERT, uh, REST, ResNet, SSD, uh, and the transform. I think uh, they are all popular networks. Okay. And uh, yeah, before uh, PyTorch 1.6, people can use NVIDIA Apex library to achieve automatic mixed precision. Uh, which can automatically convert data to FP16 in computation and uh, do the loss of scaling to preserve some more gradient values. And uh, now in PyTorch 1.6, it natively supports AMP, and uh, I think it's more, uh, it's easier to use. Okay, and uh, then uh, how to enable AMP in real practice? Uh, as you know, Monet is a flexible library. You can only use Monet components in a typical PyTorch program, like uh, transforms, networks, a lot of functions, the metrics. And you can also use Monet workflows to simplify the training loop. So uh, to enable AMP in PyTorch program, you need to use uh, auto cast for your computation part and uh, manually scale loss function. Oh, sorry, a uh, scale loss values, uh, just like the left uh, example. You see here we use the autocast and the uh, scalar. Yeah. Okay. And to set uh, AMP in Monet workflows, you just need to set AMP equals true in supervised trainer or supervised evaluator, uh, just like the right example. So. Uh, you can choose which one to use depending on your needs. Okay. Uh, and then let's see what's the what's the real world performance with AMP in Monet program. As you can see in this notebook tutorial, uh, I pasted the link here. It's a 3D segmentation task for the Spline data set or decathlon challenge. We use exact the same high parameter for training. The only difference is the uh, AMP true or AMP false. Uh, take a look at the chart. On V100, AMP training is much faster for every epoch and uh, uses even less epoch numbers to achieve expected validation metrics. So the overall training time is faster. Uh, actually, as AMP uses less memory, we can use bigger batch size to achieve better performance. Uh, here we use the same batch size, but uh, I think you can have a try if you are interested. And uh, you can also find that on A100 GPU, uh, no matter AMP true or AMP false, 
it's about uh, two times faster than V100. So I think it's time to refresh your GPU cards now. And uh, we also did another interesting practice. Uh, here we combined AMP with other two MONAD features, the Novel Grad optimizer and the cache data set as Winchi introduced. Uh, when comparing to the typical PyTorch training program, it's about uh, uh, 10 times faster on V100 GPU because uh, AMP and the Novel Grad optimizer take over various fewer epochs to achieve expected uh, metrics. So I strongly recommend to use all of the three features in your program to achieve the best performance. Okay. Okay, uh, let's switch to distributed data parallel part. Okay, uh, as you may know, uh, there are two modules in PyTorch can support multiple GPU training. It's data parallel and uh, distributed data parallel. The data parallel module is easier to use, but the performance is not good. And it can't be compatible with PyTorch AMP as, as I just introduced. And uh, can't support multi nodes training. So it cannot support distributed training. And uh, so as many PyTorch tutorials suggested, uh, distributed data parallel should be a better choice, I think. Uh, it creates multiple processes to run the training. Uh, every process control one GPU device. And uh, there are many other distributed training frameworks. Uh, I think uh, Horrorworld is the most popular one. Uh, I don't want to uh, talk much about Horror here, but you can find the distributed training example with Horror in Monet examples. Uh, I pasted the link here at the end of this page. You can, you can find uh, many examples. We also prepared distributed training examples with native PyTorch APIs, examples with Monet workflows and the real world practice with the Green tumor data set of a decathlon challenge. Then, uh, how to do that? Uh, to enable data parallel with Monet workflows, you need to uh, set below steps. Uh, first of all, let's initialize the process group. Uh, here, we use Nico as the backend. Then, we need to wrap the model with PyTorch distributed data parallel. Uh, and uh, specify the GPU device. Then wrap the data set with PyTorch distributed sampler. It will sample data for every process and uh, suffer data before every epoch. Uh, the last step is to set uh, uh, some, some stats handler and uh, checkpoint handler only for rank, rank zero process. Uh, note that uh, Monet metrics can automatically reduce data from all processes. So you don't need to uh, worry about the uh, uh, parallel computation of metrics. So uh, the last one is to uh, how to launch the program. Here you need to set some parameters uh, like uh, how many GPU devices on uh, each mode each node sorry, and uh, how many nodes we have and uh, the node rank index for current node, the master, master, master node address, master node port. Okay, that's a standard uh, PyTorch command. Uh, let's see what's the real world performance with distributed data parallel uh, here we did an experiment on four NVIDIA DGX1 servers based on the brain tumor segmentation task of a decathlon challenge. Uh, you can see the speed up for every epoch and the total training and the time consuming to achieve expected metrics. Uh, I think it's uh, impressive. Okay. Now let's uh, jump to some real-time demo. 
the first demo is uh, the AMP. Okay. Here is the uh, notebook. You can find the code on on the tutorial repo. Yeah. Okay. Let's just run the code. Here we use the uh, Spline dataset of a decathlon challenge and use the same transformed, same train process. Uh, the only difference is the AMP on or AMP off. So first we use AMP on. Oh, now we uh, needed to catch the data before training. Uh, as Vinci introduced, we use the cache data set to load data from files and run the non-random transforms, then cache the result for further epochs. Uh, for example, if we have 1,000 epochs of chain, we only need to do this part uh, once, and uh, it can obviously improve the performance of the training. Okay, we cache the data for training and uh, also cache the data for validation. Okay, as you can see the training start. Yeah, so I think the average step time is about uh, uh, 0 0.25, right? Uh, we, we don't have time to change it now. Uh, let's stop and uh, change it to the MP off part. Now, okay, let's catch again and uh, train without MP. Uh, if you are interested, you can also use the persistent cache data set and uh, smart cache data set here. Okay, now uh, you see that the step time is about uh, 0 0.42. So comparing to the AMT training, the AMT training is much faster, right? 0 0.25. Okay. Let's stop the training and uh, and the jump to the uh, distributed data parallel demo. Uh, this is the distributed data parallel examples. You can also find the code in one repo. Um, as I introduced in the slides, yeah. here we first uh, initialize the process group, uh, set transforms, and uh, set the distributed sampler for data set. Then we wrap the model with distributed data parallel module. And we uh, set the stats handler, the checkpoint handlers, only for rank zero and then we can start the training. Okay, uh, here is the code in the notebook. Okay, first uh, let's try to train uh, with one GPU on one node, but uh, we still use the same code. Uh, for example, here we have a one GPU, one node, let's see. And you can see that we have 20 iterations in every epoch. So now we only use one GPU. Let me check. Yeah, okay. Only the first GPU is in use. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a demo, so we use some synthetic just take data and uh, only train five repos. After this, uh, we are trying to train with two GPUs on one node. Yeah. 
Okay, to complete. Uh, let's try to train with two GPUs on uh, one node. So it's uh, some, something similar to data parallel, but uh, we use distributed data parallel for multi GPU training. Uh, you can see that the iteration is a 10, not a 20 anymore, right? Because we have two GPUs, let's check the device. Yeah, you can see that uh, those two GPUs are used. Okay. Uh, Computer. Okay, and the last step, let's try to connect the two physical machines and uh, train with two uh, nodes. Every node have uh, two GPUs. Uh, check the left uh, terminal. I also prepared uh, another machine here. Uh, let's try to connect them and uh, train together. Now you can see uh, the iterations is a file. Uh, we we only print the logs at, in the uh, master node, so nothing so in, in this part. But uh, let's check the device. Oh, it's too fast already completed. <laughs> okay, maybe I'll try again. Okay. Let's check the device. Mm -hmm. You can see the two GPUs are in use. Okay. Okay. Uh, that's all for the demo. Uh, do you guys have any questions? Okay, uh, thanks for your time. I'm Nicola.